So I haven't worked out for nine months. And at first it was just a break that I was trying to take from fitness overall. I was tired of waking up every single day and working out and I really never took a true break. You're a liar. So that's not entirely true. I did take weeks off here and there to deload, which is like a programmed way of taking rest. I've taken time off for vacation. I just never really took longer than a week. So this nine months has been like the longest in 17 years that I've taken a break from fitness. So that's why I think there's a little bit of anxiety around it, just because it's like that used to be kind of my safe thing. I always had control over that. And when I let go of control, it was like, what's going to happen? So I decided at the end of my wife's pregnancy that I would not work out as much. Well, those couple of months turned into three, six and nine total months. So I'm going to challenge myself for the next 60 days to slowly get back in shape. The main priority is going to be fitness because it's the thing that I'm most removed from at this moment. I'm working out in my garage. If you couldn't tell, it looks like, you know, your average garage. I definitely need to clean it up. I haven't cleaned it up for a while, so. The next 60 days isn't gonna be focused on a specific workout, a specific nutrition plan, a specific schedule. It's me doing the best that I can with the current schedule that I have. Here's why that's important. When you have all the time in the world, like when you're in college, and you can stick to a fitness plan, that means absolutely nothing. Okay, I don't really mean that, but you get what I'm trying to say. When you have a full-time job, you got kids, you got other dependents, every single cent and ounce of your time is precious. And a lot of times working out, eating right, fall to the way back of that priority list and things that you used to do more often, you get to do less. So you try to prioritize those. I totally get it. And that's what changed my mind completely when it came to fitness as an adult. I was always preaching that fitness was super important to people whose lives I had never lived. And now as a parent, I totally get why fitness is at the back burner of every single one of your days. So this vlog is important because I want to show you how to do it being as busy as you are, because now I understand that lifestyle. And the challenge for me personally is, am I able to do all of this? Am I able to improve my fitness, improve my nutrition, lose some body fat, all while taking care of my daughter and having the least amount of time I've ever been able to do it? That's truly going to be the challenge. And I'll be completely honest with you. Even though I have the confidence that I'm able to do it, I have no idea if it's going to be feasible or even sustainable, which I think is going to be a really good thing because when you try to achieve something with the odds stacked against you, you become a lot more efficient with your time and you become a lot more efficient with what you actually do during the time that you have free. So right now I'm recording this video. I should probably be working out. Why? 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 but I have to do it all. So this is where the challenge comes in. And I'm actually looking for the challenge, even though I have no idea whether or not I'll be able to actually do it. Just do it. So I decided I'm going to bring you along with me. And my main goal for you is to be able to give you a very real life, in-depth look at what it's like to try to improve your yourself or your fitness or your nutrition when things are just not ideal. We're not going to focus on the specific workouts that I'm doing or what I'm eating, although that will be a part of the journey. So here's why I'm not following a very specific nutrition or fitness plan during these 60 days. It's not about the fitness. It's not about the nutrition. Yes, those are the tasks that I'm doing every single day. I'm trying to work out more consistently. I'm trying to get more steps. I'm trying to lift more weights. I'm trying to eat in a way that's more congruent with being healthy. But every single time I've ever followed a plan, that plan has always broken down. Not because it's a bad idea to plan for things, because trying to improve yourself doesn't work within a vacuum. For me anyway, and for people that I've trained, I've noticed that following a plan is usually too rigid. So instead what I do is I have a general idea of the kinds of things that I want to do on both the fitness and nutrition end, and I implement them at a pace that works best for me. Here's a quick little example. Instead of saying I'm going to follow blank diet, I tell myself, let's try to have one salad a day. So instead of following an entire nutrition plan, I'm just trying to follow one habit. On the fitness end of things, I just have three or four different types of exercise that I like to do, and I space those out throughout the week. So on a Monday, I might lift weights, and on a Tuesday, I might go for a walk or a run or do some type of cardio, but I'm not married to doing a certain thing on a certain day because right now, I'm just trying to build momentum. But a very important thing for you to remember while you watch this sort of vlog docu-series, God, this itch in my nose is killing me, is that I want you to realize that every person has to figure out 
what their nutrition and what their fitness is going to look like based on what they have either available to them, their knowledge, or the time they're able to commit. Why is this all so complicated? And there's always something that you can do to make it work for you. And what I hope to be able to do is let you feel good about starting very small. Because in the beginning, it's not about how many calories you're eating or how many times a week you're working out. It's about finding the most likely scenario for you to stay consistent. So if that means that you love to run or you like to run more than anything else, do that first. I know, kind of a weird surprise, right? I used to be a big hater. Well, that's because I'm an idiot. Thankfully, I have a long life ahead of me and I can actually learn things and not be an idiot. But if you like to run, go run. Don't listen to guys like me who tell you not to run. Sure, running doesn't build muscle, but if you like to run, who the f cares? Go do it, go enjoy it, get active. That's all that matters. I don't care if it doesn't build muscle. I don't care if it's the best exercise in the world. Start with that because you have to build momentum. If you're trying to build momentum doing things that you aren't going to do, you're never going to get to the point where you have that momentum. Then when you actually have the momentum from what you started off with, be it as small as it might be, you can start implementing other things that might be more beneficial and strategic for your specific goals. All right, I got to get to doing my workout. I look forward to doing this journey with you. Let's make it happen.